Welcome back. This is my second part of this casual let's play of Cataclysm. And now we start into the real game. But first, story time. Der Krieg um Megara hat die Galaxis in Aufruhr gestürzt. In den vergangenen 15 Jahren sind neue Möglichkeiten erschienen und alte Fronten haben sich verhärtet. Die einstige Vormacht, das Taidan Imperium, zerbarst im Chaos des Bürgerkriegs. Nun bemüht sich die neue Taidan Republik, die Reste zusammenzuhalten. In den neuen Piratenkönigreichen lauern dem alten Imperator treu ergebende Kräfte auf ihre Chance zurückzuschlagen. Während die Taidan um ihren Weg zwischen Vergangenheit und Zukunft kämpfen, haben sich die Kushan auf Higara eingerichtet. Sie bauen neue Städte und sie beheben die Schäden aus der Entscheidungsschlacht um ihre Heimatwelt. Sogar in Zeiten unsicheren Friedens gibt es politische Notwendigkeiten. Der Rat der Kitit wurde neu eingerichtet und nun wird die Zukunft von Higara von den versammelten Kitsits beraten. Aber selbst unter Gleichrangigen gibt es Machtkämpfe. Das Mutterschiff befindet sich nach wie vor im Orbit hoch über Higara. Mittlerweile wird es als Werft für neue Trägerschiffe nach den Plänen der einzelnen Kitit benutzt. Neue Schiffe und Besatzungen werden dringend benötigt. Die neuen Bewohner von Higara stehen unter starkem militärischem und wirtschaftlichem Druck. Der Rat verfügt über alle Rohstoffe und Technologien. Kitit mit geringem oder keinem politischen Einfluss müssen Technologien von den Bentusi und anderen Spezies erwerben. Die Garaner suchen jetzt in exotischen Raumschiffen ihr Glück zwischen den Sternen. Der Homeworld-Krieg ist zu Ende, aber die Galaxis bleibt ein Ort voller Gefahren. There we are. First mission. Annäherung auf Vector oh, 247. Oh, but it's... Yes, there she is. Our command ship, the Kunla. But story time isn't over. There are still a few things left to say. In-game cutscene time. Ladung gesichert. Alles klar, Platz frei machen. Unsere Brüder und Schwestern rufen um Hilfe. Und die Sonntag antworten. Nur an alle Schiffe. Bereit halten für Alarmhilfersprung. Kurs auf Heimatfeld setzen. Now we're leaving the place where we were supposedly during the training tutorial. Or maybe not. And jumping back to Higara. Yes, now we can see a fine battle scene with the highest power of software rendering. <sighs> makes me wish I could play with hardware rendering, but well, it just makes the game crash.
Yep. Yigaran forces clashing with Titan invaders. Ich glaube, für eine Identifikation ist es jetzt ein bisschen zu spät. I mean, ah, shit, I forgot. <laughs> They tried to. Uh, they wanted them to identify themselves, and I said, "Well, a bit too late for that." Ah, software explosion. And here we are. Start aktiviert. Taktikzentrale online. Volle Energie auf Sensoren. Kampfdaten werden analysiert. Leitstelle, wir müssen feststellen, wo wir am besten helfen können. Verstanden, Taktikzentrale. Achtung, Trägerschiff Ferrag. Hier geht Samta, Leiterschiff Kunlad. Wir haben Sektor 1 no. und 2 erreicht. Now we are trying to make contact with our fleet. Wir schicken alles, was wir haben. Aber wir sind ein Bergbauschiff. Wir sollten lieber nicht mitten in eine Schlacht hineinfliegen. Einer unserer Firelands-Fregattenverbände wird bei diesen Koordinaten von Taidan-Bombern beschossen. Ohne Jägerunterstützung werden die Fregatten vernichtet und die Flanke wird zusammenbrechen. Schicken Sie so schnell wie möglich eine Staffel Vasalljäger zur Unterstützung der Fregatten. So, now finally the game begins. First task. Building a few ships, then sending them to help out a few of our frigates, so the Titan don't blast away through our flanks. So while I'm moving my ships a bit around, nearer to our spot of resources, I'll try to explain what happened in the cutscenes. I am well aware that not all of you are speaking German, so. What happened? As the ah uh, yeah yeah here we are building lots of little vassal fighters or acolytes as they were called in the English version. I prefer vassal most likely because I grew up with this game. So sorry. So back to the cutscene. As we now now, uh, 15 years ago, the Taidan Emperor Riestu the fourth, if I pronounce this correctly got himself killed and uh, he garants and the Taidan re rebels won but there was still a lot of imperial fleets left and all those little splinters just ran their own way the Turan Turanic raiders stole a lot of worlds and it turned out it wasn't the best of ideas to give them oh shit another cutscene Wir orten eine Gruppe von Taidan-Jägern, die sich vom Kampfzentrum aus nähert. Wahrscheinlich interessiert sie unsere Hypersprung-Signatur. Ah, yes, the Taidan have finally noticed the giant mining ge ship suddenly jumping in. And now they're sending a few little fighters to welcome us. Not really a threat. Actually, the few guns of uh, our command ship alone could. Well, waste them. But it's not professional, so I leave a few fighters to deal with them. And of course, time lapse so that we don't have to wait for an eternity for them to actually come to me. And uh, back to story time. Where was I? Ah, yes. The Tyrannic Raiders, paid and supported by the Emperor. Well, they used the time of troubles after uh, the Emperor got killed and snatched up a lot of the old Imperial worlds. And uh, Imperial, the Imperial Splinter Fleets either did their own thing or joined forces with the Tyrannic 
Raider Kingdoms. What is left of the Titan Empire is now the Titan Republic. And they are our allies. And we need allies because, well, the Higarans have Higara and about five light years of uh, space around it. Complete with uh, diplomatic approval and everything. So. Here I'm trying to orient myself on the sensor map, move our first swarm of little fighters to our target. On the right you see a giant wall of space sensors that will be important later in the mission. Left is the giant battle going on. And, ah yeah, so for 15, 15 years of building on Higara, uh, Taidan infighting, tyrannic rider, raiders everywhere. It's quite a shit show. So, and there was a lot of political upheaval on Higara because the Sumta and a lot of other smaller clans got, well, the shit end of the stick, political wise. The Sumta finally won, absorbed a lot of some even smaller clans in some, in some and were allowed to use the old mother ship to build command ship of their, of their own. They finished the Kuhn Lan and two other ships we will later see in the game. And well, then here we are. The Sumta were uh, mining resources to sell them. Then suddenly a splinter fleet of the Titan attacked Higara. One of Lots of attacks during those 15 years. And so, like all ships of Figara have to do, we jumped back and offered help. Help was ac accepted, and now we are destroying those pesky little torpedo frigates here. Uh, uh, fuck, I mean torpedo bombers. So, here. Claw formation for concentrated firepower. And actually, enough firepower I can sometimes just draw a frame around enemy ships like this. And then just, well, kill a lot of them in one fell swoop. So, this is our second fighter swarm. And I just leave them here as guard. This will become actually important later on. Now back to our old fighters. Protecting, well, saving the frigates of our brethren. So, as you see, I'm heavily abusing the pause function. And frame drawing is actually quite a nice method if you have trouble clicking on little enemy ships in deep space. So you have never trouble actually getting them. If you have a look of our little Vassal or Acolyte fighters, every time they open fire, they actually... Um, extend these little mass driver cannons of theirs. Oh, and they can make those little maneuvers sometimes out of their own account. Sadly, the software rendering engine of the game, well, has sometimes trouble, it seems. Or maybe it's just the game is, well, rather old. Well, there are rumors of a... Oh shit, I wanted to say there are rumors of a high-definition version coming out, but I just remembered it's only Homeworld 1 and 2. Not Cataclysm. Sadly. So maybe one of these days I will just build an old computer or something so I can see Cataclysm in glorious hardware rendering. And most likely then I will see it. It doesn't actually look any better as now. Ah. Ah. But still, I think it looks 
quite nice still. And it's three dimensional something. Not many um, real time strategy games I ever did. Well, maybe Supreme Commander, but real Supreme Commander or. Uh, this was still on. well, uh, fighting on a planet's surface, not in deep space. So it was more like three dimensional modeling, but not real 3D space combat. And thanks to the sensor map, you have actually. it's quite easy to move you around. You can use your um, arrow keys to move around inside the sensor or you can just focus the camera on everything you click on and sometimes you get, you get cases like me where I just keep on forgetting how to correctly focus the camera or forget that I can just move around the uh, field of vision with your arrow keys. Man, I really hope no one notices how often I have to look up English words. Shit. Oh, next cutscene. And again the mouse. Uh oh. Oh. So we just helped Keith Nabal out in holding the flank, but pesky little Titan ships attacking our sensor wall. And now, after we helped out with holding the flank against the Titan invaders, you know, I have to send ships to find out what's happening. Ah. I forgot, before we actually can help the sensors, we have to destroy a few resource collectors first. I keep forgetting this. It's quite easy. You just move your unit sim into this little echo, and as soon as you see the res enemy resource collectors, you get the order to nice destroy them. There's literally just one little thing interesting with this and right afterwards we have to protect the sensors. Man, it's quite impressive here how I can <laughs> forget about a third of a mission. Well, hopefully I won't forget anything important later on. Ah, time lapse to the rescue, and now we found them. Oh, here I'm um, taking a nicer look, and then I'm using the move order to reposition my units. Ah, yes, and this little fighter squadron gets the final attack order. Here you see a funny little thing, if uh, you look from above like this, you would never notice that the red fighters attacking us were actually far above our fighters, so they never actually met, even though it looked like this. To avoid cases like this, you should really... oh! Now we learn about coupling and building covets, but... Shit, what was I talking about a moment ago? Ah yes, in, in sense of view and even a normal view, it's better to just right click on your mouse and move the camera around a bit to look, to take a better look. Ah, uh, and zooming in and out is 
also quite important because of this. So, uh, the attacking fighters are already dead. Now I see. Send my fighters. Yeah, time lapse. Eight times the speed. For eight times the fun or something. Here we are. Now we can attack those little buggers. Yes, yes, weapons loaded. On the left side we see the research thingy slowly getting more full. And as soon as we have researched Kupel tech, Kupling technology, we can upgrade all our fighters. Oh, we're making them explode. There were, I think, a few defense cruisers somewhere in between, but they all died in the first salvo. So. One hit after another. And I think with just two passes. A uh, resource collector should die. Second pass, yes, two passes. Never underestimate the power of the fighter. So. Oh, after we upgraded our fighters, we can couple two fighters together to get one Corvette. It's quite uh, nice because if you forget to fight uh, to build Corvettes, then you can just turn your fighters into war corvettes. Also, it's kind of nice if you have to go somewhere fast. You can simply bow, build fighters, send the fighters somewhere close to the enemy, and then just couple them together to get more, more firepower closer to the enemy. Because, as you may have noticed by me, by me mentioning this fact, fighters are fast, corvettes are not so fast. Faster than larger ships, but slower than fighters. So the smart thing is obviously to send your fighters and then turn them into corvettes. Ah, one of my fighters is actually nearly dead. I did better in my first playthrough to this mission, but sadly I forgot to actually switch on my recording software. So I'm now on my second try. Funny, I take more damage this way around, but I also take about 10 minutes faster. Or was it take 10 minutes less time? Ah, ah there you can actually see a carrier with support units on the map. And if we take too long to destroy the resource collectors, then they kind of drag our ships along with them. And if we too obsessive with destroying the collectors, then suddenly we are too close to the carrier and get wasted. So don't do this. Yeah. Just have a swarm of fighters prepared, send them over, kill everything, and you have no problem at all. So now we can actually upgrade our fighters. Those will be the first. Now I build a shitload of units more. Oh. Ah, yeah, thanks. I never noticed. I hate it when <laughs> cutscenes happen while I'm trying to build something. Yeah. It's also kind of nice that they don't actually prevent you from doing anything. Just kind of don't know immersion breaking if you Achtung, no that's wrong. wrong. I guess it's just a bit annoying. Like Wenn die Anlage ausfällt, no. die But die it looks durch die Lücke Wir die ah it's sensors schützen. finally. Und yeah. This is the part of the mission I most like. Uh, I'm most likely to remember when playing because it was the f uh, it was quite literally my first defeat. I was I don't know 12 or 16 or something when playing the first time, and I completely fucked this part up. 
so of course every time I'm playing the through first mission I kind of just destroy everything and the only thing I remember afterwards is the part with the sensors. So this time I'm really really prepared. And just what am I? Ah yes, formation. The good old claw formation. My favorite. Now I'm trying what I was talking about before, I send all my fighters over there and turn them back into corvettes when they arrive. Also I keep forgetting the shortcuts for my managers, now I just build a few corvettes. Just because I can. It's quite irrelevant. Fighters or corvettes. A corvette costs about twice as much as a fighter, so it's the same. You build two fighters, you build one corvette, same resources, same time. The only difference is if you build fighters, you have fighters, and fighters move fast. And you can turn the fighters into corvettes whenever you want, like now. Now, coupling order. Oh, I guess I fucked up. That was a bit too close to the enemy. Yeah, Coopling. Ah, shit. Yeah. That was the stupidest thing ever. I don't know how, but five out of six Corvettes actually survived this attack. Now I'm just making a mass attack. And since we are dealing with fighters here, it's actually not that bad. A Corvette can as you can see here, just rip fighters apart. So now I'm sending more units to the fray. And keep trying to... Ah yes, one hit. <laughs> and destroy it. So the only real problem are the two enemy corvettes down below. The fighters are just cannon fodder at this point. The part, part to remember, the fighter bombers and fighter are good against capital ships and fighters against other fighters too. And corvettes just waste fighters and fighter bombers. And if you deal with enemy capital ships uh, without support or anti-fighter craft gu guns or something like this, point defense that was it, then Corvettes can also deal with them quite handily. So, my other units turn, turn up the old Acolyte fighters, now you can hopefully see them surviving. The bad part is those 10 fighters. If, they, if I get unlucky, they can die really fast. If I get lucky, they, together with my corvettes, can deal with those. Right now I seem to have luck. Most of the firepower of the enemy corvettes concentrated on my corvettes. So I can just eliminate them, no trouble. Looks like at least one of my corvettes will survive. Oh, wow. It was better than the last time. The last time I spent about five minutes trying to Watcher, eliminate go go. one corvette who somehow survived the fighters I had assigned to kill it. It was uh, embarrassing. Luckily you don't have to sit through it and... Ah, another cutscene. Ah. Now the Thailand give him giving up. To a heavy losses. You know how it is in the military. But one heavy cruiser is still there and we get a chance to destroy it. So first things first. I send all not upgraded fighters and the half destroyed corvettes back for repairs uh, now to 
my dear viewers, docking small ships to your command ship or a carrier if we if we get one later, instantly repass them. Looks as if we have cleared almost everything of out of resources. No time lapse. Docking on the on the command ship. Oh, Nate. I see there's still a lot of resources left, but there's a reason we have time lapse. And now here I'm trying to find a way through the fight with the last remaining Titan ships, but then I'm just giving up since there are a lot of our allies fighting around, so we should have no trouble just What's crashing up? through. And there we are, we are through. Now we are almost at the enemy cruiser. I wish every mission was that easy. So, now we are taking a look. Yes, there is a the cruiser. So, uh, already burning. And defense cruisers. So, but those defense cruisers won't survive long against our fighters. Oh, corvettes. Holy shit. I thought the entire time I uh, had sent fighters. Uh, apparently, I did the smart thing for us. But well, now the defense cruisers are really toast. Ah, yes, now you remember, I think the first time around I sent fighters because, well, they were fast. But then they t took actually quite a bit longer to actually reach, so. Uh, wasn't the smartest move. I think I only did it because I already lost most of my corvettes back by the sensors. Well, a heavy cruiser normally could really hurt us with its point defense, but this time it's still easy mode, just so the player can see a heavy cruiser in action without actually getting, well, murdered by it. Yes. Keep sending. Yep, no, it explodes. And that was it. Now we can only end the mission. But before, before we end the mission, let's uh, first things first. All units together, all resources collected, and time lapse. So we don't have to wait for ages. Commando Chef is on the at the end of a mission I like to collect the resources to the left and repair all the units I have. Because I still have a bit resources left, I'm moving my command ship a bit closer to the resources. Yes, everything is eight times as fast even in close-up view. So. Everything is repaired, a few resources are still missing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fiddling around. And yes, looks like we helped save our homeworld. The question, question is, will our political enemies be thankful for it. Ah yes, I uh, forgot to mention. Uh, during the political upheaval in the 15 years between Homeworld 1 and Cataclysm, uh, the Zomta made not only Edda, allies among their fellow Keith, they also made some really uh, enemies. Really something, yeah. Uh, keep forgetting words, dipshit. So, now we are finished. Saved. Uh, no, there wasn't anything I forgot.
Oh, was der? Ah, yes, Cutscene Time. Mayday! Mayday! Verliere Luft! Stürzen ab! Wir haben drei Blindgänger an Bord dieses Teilkreuzers. Schlage vor. Durchhalten, Ag 9. Wir haben euch gleich. Vorsicht, der Reaktor ist instabil. Das war gute Arbeit, aber Sie werden bestimmt vergessen, sich zu bedanken. Wohl wahr. AS-12 haben Sie die Anzugssignale aus Sektor 43 verfolgt. Schlechte Nachrichten. Wir haben die Anzüge gefunden, aber die armen Schweine hatten keine Chance, ihre Helme aufzusetzen. Beerdigungsschiffe benachrichtigt. Achtung! An alle Higara-Schiffe! Wir haben die imperialen Angreifer zurückgeschlagen. Higara dürfte wieder sicher sein. Der Kid Nabal möchte sich bei allen Brüdern und Schwestern von den Kidit Manan, Siet und Kalil für die Hilfe im Kampf bedanken. Die Gara steht genau wie wir in ihrer Schuld. So, we got our thanks. Well, we didn't, but our other, the, the other clans were defending Gara. Ah. It's quite impressive how only the political enemies of the defenders got no, got no thanks for helping out. So, no real support to Zosh for something. A space Zosh in space. But, we are going on to space Zosh for the Bushan Re next time. Ja, ja. Pilot. Pilot. God. Badger. Ein Technikmodul bauen, um unsere Besatzungen entsprechend vorzubereiten. Um Platz zu schaffen, müssen wir das obere Erzlagermodul absprengen. Yes, this module has to be destroyed. But this next time.